there, life sim gaming friends. Thank you for clicking, your time is appreciated, and thank you for stopping by to check out this review of a cutesy little game called Alchemy Story by independent designer Eloise LaRoche. She has a great little stream over on Twitch, which she allows viewers to see real-time development of current and upcoming games. That's a neat way to learn about more game making. I'll link the channel in the description. Let's jump right into a new game here. I must admit, I'm quite pleased you've decided to pursue your alchemy studies in our village, Miss Thornheart. The time of your arrival couldn't be more fortunate for us. Oh, did something happen? I feared that sharing our predicament with you might scare you away, but it's only fair that I tell you. A fortnight ago, a witch cast a dark spell on our village. Luckily, some of us were immune to it, but most villagers turned into animals. Animals? Is there anything that we can do to help them? We'll have to try. As alchemists, it's our duty to restore the natural balance. We've been studying this curse since the event, but... Sadly, I'm still missing vital elements to safely transmute everyone. Now I must ask for your help. Will you lend me your help, Arabella Thornheart? Up to some town saving all? Residents have mysteriously turned into animals and we've got some rescuing from a curse with our potion powers. Character, custom Character customization doesn't exist in this game. Only outfit changes through the dresser in the home location in which you'll acquire more outfits throughout the game. Also, here is our cauldron for getting work done. But outside, there's even more work to be done if we just head out there and check the mail. I'm pretty sure every day that you can expect some quests from the town's NPCs. Hi, new friend. We haven't even met yet, but Edward has told me that you'll move here soon. To help you settle in, I've asked Ellie to lend you a hand with your garden. You might have encountered her already. She's a little groundhog who loves snacks. If you give her some to eat, she'll plant seeds around the garden for you. I'm sending you a few snacks you can offer her. Don't worry, she won't bite. From Charlotte Oddsbrow. Greetings, Apprentice. I've sent my owl, Nico, to your residence early this morning with a few potion orders. You'll be able to brew these potions by using the cauldron in your house. I send with this letter a few ingredients to get you started. I'll compensate you accordingly for your assistance. Edward Greenwood. gonna run around the corner and meet Nico right now. Little Birdie cycles the potion request daily with a list of three random items for your available potion recipes. It's one of the easier ways to generate gold in the game, just keeping Tweety happy in the beginning of the game. Other ways of generating currency in this game are by digging up artifacts for the museum that drops a daily stipend of gold based on your finds, and by purchasing yourself some stalls in the market to place items for sale. The farming function in the game is enacted by your other little friend in the immediate vicinity of our back door. By feeding them snacks, seeds will be planted in the adjacent flower beds that have varied growth times. To expand your flower beds, visit Charlotte when you have extra gold. Honey is obtained by random find if you're lucky, or more steadily flows come from purchasing the beehives that will sit outside your home. They can be bought from the apiary through jasmine and require daily flowers to feed the bees. The general progression of the game is finding NPCs that were turned into animals and collecting their personal items while asking if they've remembered their name. Simultaneously, you'll be getting tons of side requests from residents who were not affected by the curse to bring this flower or that item. One by one, you'll pick up this new gathering skills. First comes fishing, which is fairly simple to get the hang of. The different variations of fish are caught by location. 
Rainbow fish are widely found in the ponds near the home starting location, while swordfish are caught in the water around Aiden Luckyware's home. Sunfish and moonfish will be found later on when getting into mining and chopping wood. If you have any trouble getting around, clicking on a location within the map will provide a navigating marker below your feet to guide you to where you want to go. Super handy! One thing to note about this game is it does have a bedtime at midnight that will port you back home at the end of the day. However, it can also cost you a hefty percentage of gold if you've been saving up. It's good to time your returns from the mine or forest, or also keep a stack of bedtime potions that will return you to your bed instantly in a pinch. The potions in the cauldron menu unlock through questing or by purchase, mostly from Edward found in the study, but there's probably more that I haven't come across yet. Still a little early in the game. Opening the forest and mine take a short quest chain for both. The first starting with returning the town lumberjack to his human self and getting your first axe. Once through the doors, you'll be chopping down trees to look for the key to the next lock. Sometimes, a slight shimmer around the tree for only a moment gives away the key's location at some camera angles. In addition to the tree's different kinds of wood, maple, birch, and cherry, there are also scattered mushrooms to collect. Benches for energy regeneration are every few levels. Resting shortly regains 20 energy for more swings, and the game will mark saves every five level intervals for direct travel via hot air balloon later on. You can buy that upgrade along with the mineshaft elevator with the same function after gaining the trust of the mine goat caretaker. In the mines, you'll be on the hunt for stone, coal, silver, gold, rubies, and sapphire. Gold is needed to fire up your little engine, that will be what allows you to pass through to the next level. Like the forest, it's about budgeting your energy to climb in higher levels for better materials, mushrooms, and moonfish. Tool upgrades can be found at the corresponding NPCs to these locations. These will reduce the amount of energy needed per swing, allowing for quite a bit more material collection. There's also a minecart upgrade that gives the ability to carry more than the 99 item limit that applies to most collectible items. In addition to growing crops, you've also got a small farm space to tend to that can accommodate chickens, cows, sheep, and other pets. These spaces are upgradable to allow for more livestock and furry friends. This is where you'll get the items needed like milk, eggs, wool, fur, and feathers. Among the first NPCs that were sent to help is Noah the Rancher, who will get us our first chicken friend. You'll be able to purchase additional farm animals through Noah while other pets come from the shelter. Feeding animals some of your excess gathered items daily will keep them giving you lots in return. What is alchemy exactly? Alchemy, noun, the medieval forerunner of chemistry based on the supposed transformation of matter. It was concerned particularly with attempts to convert base metals into gold or find a universal elixir. It was seemingly practiced in sporadic cultures in ancient times, loosely hinged on astrology concepts, and the primary quest was transmutation of metals, particularly lead into gold. Mostly known for being a subject at Hogwarts. Popular in the medieval ages, there were more widely believed, but as you might have guessed from all the people who didn't make it to this day, the immortality that they claimed to be able to provide didn't actually exist. It was actually practiced far earlier in Egypt, the Middle East, and China. There was philosophical and spiritual aspects to the study of alchemy, making it really more of a whole way of thinking and living. One shared by Sir Isaac Newton, who would discover gravity in his science hobby. Odd. Despite this game's main character, nearly no women alchemists existed during the medieval times, but the first was ever recorded in 200 AD long before. She was credited with the discovery of heating and distillation of elements that still use today. Some alchemists believed that their fabled Philosopher's Stone could do more than just provide wealth and immortality. One work claims that it can turn glass from a solid into a flexible substance. 
thus bestowing, along with affluence and eternal life, the ultimate sales gimmick. However, being a bit of a geek about car detailing, I already know that glass is an amorphous solid. Meaning, unlike a crystalline solid, glass doesn't have an organized structure, making it a really great coating for a painted surface of a car. Thin glass provides a sacrificial super hard layer above the paint that's more resistant to scratching, water spots, and chemical damage from daily road use. It would be the detailers of all folks to figure out the Philosopher's Stone. Go figure! The failed science was doomed from the start by being based in the concepts of air, fire, earth, and water rather than atoms and elements that we know about by now. And the rich who invested in alchemy never saw the return on the investment on the immortality clause. As silly as it was, it was the alchemists who would eventually go on to be our modern day chemists, so consider yourself a wizard scientist potion maker player. This is an easy going game, no violence at all, great for kids, and would keep an adult mildly entertained if they're looking for something to just unwind on opening up a storyline and different recipes. But there's not a ton to the game beyond just getting all of those different elements for your home upgraded and the potion recipes. Still a reasonably priced game for the time that one can get out of playing it though. Some amount of satisfaction in manifesting this cute little farm with lovely animals. The art is Eloise's very signature style that shows in another title she's created called Lemon Cake. You can find both over on Steam and more game reviews on my channel. Help growing the channel is greatly appreciated. I'm pretty new to all this, so thank you for the likes, comments, and shares. It does mean a lot to me. I'll be playing some games, chatting about science, and going on car-related adventures. If you have any games or fun science facts to share or even a quirky history, drop it in the comments below or on Discord and I hope you enjoy the day. Take care y'all. Bye bye <laughs>